Okay, I'm going to talk more about the edit buttons in this one, about what these various buttons do. And uh, if we go into edit our surface, um, and we do, this is a beauty fill. That's um, split mesh without removing faces. And two sphere subdivide. These are just various ways of modifying the mesh. Um, this remove doubles is important if you have, say, two polygons. Or, I mean, and you want these to share vertices, you would scale them down such in a way that they're almost the same vertice, but if you want it to share the vertices, if you say you want to share the edge between these surfaces, you would scale down their vertices, make them overlap, then you would select these vertices and do a remove doubles. And that in fact makes it say makes it makes these guys share an edge. We do a Move doubles again. I have to do it. If for some reason it didn't actually reduce the, but now they share an edge because the vertices are instead of being two vertices at each end, they are one vertice on each end and they share a double. They are um. They're now owned by, by each polygon and the edge is shared and that means that uh, your surface uh, shading will be more it will be smooth um, because what we talked about when we were talking about normals um, whereas if they were s separate vertices no matter how much smoothing you would do um, it would have no effect because the edges wouldn't be shared. It only smooths if the edges are shared. So your vertices, you use remove doubles, which is called also called on other programs a weld effect. And this right here adjusts the quantization of the. It it determines um, how it's going to weld, how far it's going to weld vertices. Mm -hmm. If I increase that number, say um, let's subdivide these and I do a weld feature, remove doubles, nothing gets removed, but if I increase this number to some crazy number and then I do remove doubles, it will quantize the surfaces. And um, what it's doing is it's really, it seems to be doing a weld operation with respect to the grids, grid size. If I do this, select, um, well, first I have to adjust my grid size. I go up here into this thing, and I look for edit methods, I think. Somewhere in here we can adjust our grid size. View controls. Yeah, somewhere there's a, a way to adjust your grid size. It's probably under world. Or I don't know where the grid size is, but there's a way to adjust the grid size. I forgot where exactly that is adjusted. But um, you adjust your grid size and it will also affect, um, I think it will affect the um, welding effect. So that's welding. Center, what center does is it takes and it adjusts that point right there and puts it in the center of the data. So if I click that, actually it does the opposite of what I thought. It uh, moves all the mesh data to the center. It reorients orients the, and I think center, 
Oh, center on cursor, that's what we would do. Um, we'd move the cursor to selected and select the object and then do center cursor and that would, oh, I have to do it. I can't do it in edit mode. Then it readjusts the, the cursor to the uh, medium or the, the middle of the mesh data. And that's how I do that. Old Blender doesn't have a concept of pivoting. The way you would get pivoting effect is to select some vertices, get the cursor to the selected vertices, add a empty, and then you would parent the polygon to the empty, make parent, and then you would you could um, rotate the empty and that would create a kind of a pivoting effect and th this would still retain its local rotation but then you could pivot according to that so you would be able to pivot because um, that's really what a pivot is it's, it's really a, what a surface owns the surface would own its own pivot point the center of the data could be also considered a pivot point um, if I select this vertices here and then I put the cursor there the cursor to select it then I go down here and say center cursor and then that would kind of have the same effect as a pivot and that would rotate with respect to that. If I do this, then it'll rotate with respect to the oh the, the median. I think this no, it still does it with respect to the object. The only way you could do it with respect to the vertices is to do this and that and then rotate yeah it does it with respect to the vertices when they're in edit mode but um to have definite rotation on some scale if i clear this parent and i add another empty and i put it say i put it down here move cursor to selected add another empty and uh, think I can re I think I can adjust the rotation clear rotation clear the translation by alt G alt G clears location whoops we didn't really want to do that let's reorient that um, that um, so we put cursor to selected select the empty move uh, empty to cursor and uh, if we do an alt s it, it adjusts the size mm -hmm. then if we want to be able to orient the object uh, with respect to two pivots we would take this object parent it to that object uh, and uh, make parent then we would make parent of this to that object let's adjust let's clear the rotation on that and uh, so that we can rotate along a defined axis we would then parent this and then we could do a pivot on that and we could do a pivot on this and rotate we can rotate on that we could rotate on this so we could adjust that and yeah would it, that would adjust that pivot what we actually would want to do is um, rotate this we didn't really want to rotate that we want to rotate this Rotate that, 
then rotate this. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, the way that you, um, in this old version of Blender, they had something called an armature, and you would then do this. Uh, you would then parent this mesh to the armature and said use armature. I think you use, no, actually use bone. And oh, we don't want to, we don't want to select bone. Let's do a parent with respect to the armature. Create groups from closest bone. And if we rotate the bone, we have to go into bone mode. And that is, I think this is here, that's the armature. And then we, oh, that's for constraints. It's rotational constraints. If I select this and you go in edit mode, I think it's we have to go edit in bone mode there's a way to do that where is bone mode there it is that's bone mode and if we rotate that it adjusts the vertices within that object adjust the vertices within that object then we can parent this um, let's go here and I think it's that that we select Well, there's a way to orient the bones. Oh, it's track to constraint you have to do. You have to go into here and add a track to constraint. And you track it to this object, which is object empty zero one. You do that, track to constraint object. And then you have to name the object. So we get that by going over here, selecting this object, selecting, oops, I think you can do a, I think there's a way of, of selecting and doing copy. Um, uh, control C, I think. You can do that and then maybe go in here and do control V. No. It does you have to be you have to actually type in the name. So here you would say knee. We call it knee. And then we go in here and we type knee. You have to, it's case sensitive. I put it in caps lock. Now it's adjusting it to that. It's doing a track to constraint on that. And if I adjust this, it's going to adjust that bone. And it's doing it with respect to a certain axis. Yeah. And that's how you would do. Um, this is that's how you would um, actually create legs and all sorts of stuff on your characters is by doing these um, track two constraints. That was an early way of doing constraints on blend in uh, on bones in Blender. I think the newer versions are probably more um, 
this right here is the amount of influence that the constraint has. And so you could have multiple constraints on the bone. And um, it would interpolate between the constraint, the controllers, and then you could do rotations there, and that would control the orientation of the bone. And that would determine, so you could actually do uh, actual character animation. What people tend to do is they tend to modify the rotation of the bones directly, which is called forward kinematics. And you would do this, and then you would create poses, and you would keyframe the poses. And that's how people were did animation, and I think that's still in Blender how people tend to do animation, is they don't use what's called inverse kinematics, which is using these track two constraints, and uh, it then trying to determine the orientation of the bones. And there was something called copy rotation, copy location. This is called rigging. That's when somebody says they're rigging an object. What they're doing is they're adjusting the, the how the object is, its vertices are modified. And they're not actually modified. That it's just the placement in the object mode, how the vertices are oriented, and that's how you create characters with legs and actually make the legs move and rotate is how you, is what you're doing there and I still got some time on my tutorial I, I want to shoot for 24 minutes um, per tutorial because that seems to be my normal time so I talked about um, I talked about working with armatures um, putting in pivots and I mean working creating pivots on older versions of Blender. Newer versions of Blender have defined pivots and a pivot is more important whenever you're talking about um, say you have a cube and you're trying to do some animation with uh, a, a ball or, or something like that. You put in a cube and you want the cube to rotate about one pivot and then you animate the pivot where it's centered on each each frame or each cycle so I would create a pivot here add the empty let me have to get out of it let's see add add a object I think it's add there it is add empty and I duplicate this empty put it up here put another empty over here put another empty down here and then I would parent the object to this empty parent the object to with respect to this empty parent the object with respect to that empty the object with respect to this empty and then I could rotate the, the square for that empty and then I could rotate the square with this empty and then I could or uh, move it I'm using control rotate that's how I'm able to get uh, um, snaps on the rotation and so I control and when I'm rotating and that's how you would get a pivot effect in an older version of Blender but how it actually works in new versions of Blender that you you would animate your object and the pivot would remain where it's at and then you would move you would actually animate the pivot and you would move it to the points where the object needs to rotate see the limitation now is that I've already used all my my pivots and the only thing for me to do now is to do what's called a um, a continuous a 
uh, a discontinuous uh, tr um, keyframe. I would create a keyframe here, and then I would try to. What what I would do is I would I would um, go back to my original. I, I would create a duplicate of that relationship of the original relationship of the of the square with respect to these these various empties and then I would um, I would then move up the empties create another set of motion curves and have the motion curves um, be shared and I would have a discontinued it can get really complex I'll just say that it can get really complex to work with that and it's so much better in the modern context of of blender to you to have uh, a shared pivot and then being able to work with the pivot animate the pivot and then you could go ahead and have a box that was rolling across the ground but what you would have to do to animate the box and retain the animation information for the pivots um, is you would have to keyframe the pivots originally. So I'd have to I'd have to adjust this pivot here. Whoops. Go back to my the number keys will actually switch you to your layers. I would, I would have to go back, unwind this, reorient my pivots, rotate that. Then what I would do is I'd select the empties and I would keyframe this. And what I'm doing is I'm really keyframe the lo the rotation, not the location. And then I would go up some number of keyframes, say 10, sh uh, shift select 10. Then I would go and rotate this, set a keyframe, well, rotate, now yeah, come on. And then I would set another keyframe on rotation. I would adjust the key, the rate, the frame to 20. I would go to this axis and I would rotate it. Then I would set another keyframe. And then I would select this, change it to 30. Then go to this axis and rotate it. And then set another keyframe. And then I could go back to the original frame. And you can see that there's a rolling square, but the the it's doing the it's doing the transformation on all of the things. So if I want to have each one follow strictly let me, let me make sure that this is what it's doing if i increase my um, let me s see if i can slow down the oh i know what i can do i can click on the side of this and i can see you see that it's falling off the pivot and it's just interpolating it what i have to do is i would have to go into my motion I would have to go into my motion keys, go to the, let me see what I'm doing on time. Ooh, I'm at 24 minutes. Go to the IPO curves, and I would have to make a strict interpolation here. Set all the vertices and hit V key. That would uh, force that rotation to be like that. And then this rotation couldn't occur um, that that rotation can't see this one occurs and that that doesn't have any rotation this has rotation that has rotation you see it and it doesn't 
start at the get this keyframe which is where it's supposed to start so what I do is I would take this I'd find out I would find out where that was what frame oh it's going to be 10 and it's going to be at 50 percent on this rotation so I have to go in here edit that vertex select the vertices hit V so it's a strict interpolation and then I would have to hit in and I would pop into here um, on the Y axis I need to, to start the point 5 and then I hit OK and it would move it up or actually it needs to go further up there yeah let's see I could, I could directly move it uh, hit grab I'd move it to 50% here which on the numeric key oh it looks it's five this is where it at and then I have to move it with respect to the keyframe it would go on frame five let's hit in adjust the X and set this to five hit OK oh well it's not that's not where oh no it needs to move to 10 that's right sorry uh, it needs to move to 10 so we hit numeric X this is frame 10 and it's moving it moves five spaces over which is with respect to the um, the Y axis I don't know and then then it wouldn't do that funky rotation it would wait until this one was done and we step up our frame okay um let's rotation back let's re reduce this oh, come on we move it back there oh whoops this is interpolating oh whoops I did the wrong I did it on the wrong thing I did, I should have done it on this one um, and grab that move that back there and are they sharing the same no they're not sharing curve data um I look at this guy and it's the it's this guy that has the rotation and he originally moves to that location from there oh I know what I need to do I need to adjust this at the middle frame so it's the same it's staying at the location of zero it moves to frame 10 10 hit OK it moves to the center and it won't start to move until it won't rotate until and that's what we're adjusting it won't rotate until this guy hits its 10th frame so if I move that up you can see that it's but it looks like it's still interpolating so how do I force that so that it doesn't interpolate yet Oh no, you know what's rotating? This guy up here is rotating. So I have to adjust him so that he doesn't rotate until the 20th frame. And so I go here and I hit in. I adjust this to the 20th frame so that he doesn't start interpolating until the 20th frame. Hit 20, hit return, hit OK and then it should be more yeah now it doesn't and then once that goes down then this guy comes up and then that guy does the last transformation and then you would have to do what's called a cyclic rot you would have to have these all repeat cyclically 
and you would have to set keyframes for this guy to occur at the end of the last frame. So you would put this to 30 and you would set a keyframe for that uh, for its rotation data. Make sure that all the, oh, this guy doesn't have any rotation. So we just set it for that keyframe and it will move. This will actually, this vertex, this um, thing will jump in location for the next frame. But let's keyframe that. Let's keyframe this, set its. Uh, it won't repeat until it hits the next keyframe. It will have to reset its vertex. I move to the 30th frame and I set a keyframe here. And um, hit current frame. I do that for this guy. I set him for the 30th frame. Uh, set a keyframe here. And, or we need that on the, all the, we need that on all the, set a keyframe frame there and we need to get rid of these keyframes over here which is at the 20th frame are we still modifying that um I'll select all Come on. there we go that's and we make sure that there all the keyframes are selected there. And uh, then for this guy, we also have him go to to number third. I think it's thirty. Let me see what it's for this guy. That guy. Come on. Uh, let me get rid of these things. Move them to a different layer. Uh, hit OK. Turn off layers. Select this layer. Move that to a different layer. And move the armature to another layer. I don't need the armature. I don't need this polygon anymore. Move that to another layer. And this, these two also go to a different layer. And so then I can only work on this. Let's see where our polygon is. Hit tilde, tilde, it selects all the layers. And we find out what layer this guy is on. By going here, it's on that last layer. We want to move that over to here. And then we select this layer, and so we're only working with that polygon data, with that data. And so we do this. So this is a little bit technical, um, what I'm doing here. But I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a consistent animation. So this guy moves at that frame. This guy starts to rotate at... Which frame is it rotating? It's rotating um, there, this. Okay. Let's hide that. Or let me move that to a different layer. Whoops. Select this layer. Move that to the second layer. And then we can work with this data. So I can select these points individually 
and I can see where they're, they see this one moves a little bit um, before that frame. They all, what I want to do is I want to create a cycle with respect to the last frame to where there will be, um, so the first, ah, oh, so this is what happens on the that's this is the final rotation and each one of these must have a keyframe on the last the last rotation the last the final frame so that they will cycle with respect to the jump so there will be a jump here so let's move it back to the first frame we got that and so on the last frame we got this and that's frame 30 and then we will jump we will move this data up we'll move this point right here uh, what we have to do as we have to take all this rotational data, these guys, we have to reset them to frame zero, and then we move, we then have to, oh no, this is what we have to do. I have to select this guy right here, select, or, and make him cyclic. So I adjust the curve, and this is thing called a cyclic, and it does that. We have to make sure that all oh, you see is not he's not cyclic. Um, he's not cycling on. He's only cycling on some of the curves. So I have to. I have to turn the cyclic off go back to continuous and select all the frames and move this up to 30 and then I have to set a keyframe and then I have to uh, turn hit V to make it and then I can do the cyclic and they say it'll do it with respect to the last frame this guy also has to be done the same way I have to make sure that it's on frame 30 move it up there and make sure that everything's selected here and then set a frame there then I do a cyclic on that, which does it with respect to there. Then I go to this guy and I move to frame 30 and I make sure that everything's selected. Then I hit current frame and then I turn on the cyclic for that or I have to get out of edit mode. I'll cyclic oops um, back to continuous it didn't okay but it, it I didn't have everything selected so I need to select all the curves hit a, a keyframe there then I can turn it cyclic why is it not doing it uh, continuous and oh it probably doesn't have a keyframe on that so I have to make sure these guys got keyframes down here for everything and I set a keyframe there then I'll do the cyclic there we go and that fixed that and so there's a cyclic for this there's a cyclic for that and what the cyclic does is it just repeats the animation 
So we have that, 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 that. And uh, this guy will have to do a rotation. So it will, this guy will have a keyframe on him here for rotation and location actually. Location and rotation. Then we jump to frame 30. And we adjust the location of the guy up to where this guy is. So we move cursor key to that selected. Then we move this guy on this keyframe. We move the selected to the cursor. Then we set a keyframe for this location rotation. Actually, it probably doesn't need location rotation. Then I have to select all the vertices here in these curves and then have it hit V to make it a straight road interpolation. Actually, I don't want that. I want a step interpolation. And so how do we do a step interpolation on here? I think, uh, I forgot how to do step interpolation. Uh, curve. There is a way to do a step interpolation. I'm trying to try to remember how to do that. Yeah. What a step interpolation does is it uh, it steps uh, inconsistently. It doesn't interpolate. Um, oh, I can force a step interpolation. What I do is I create an extra keyframe here fairly close to that keyframe I actually put it on 30 or I put it on 31 this is what I do I put it on 29 and then I select all the curves and then I do a a uh, keyframe then I select I have to zoom down here until I'm right really close and then I select all the curves I did it do a a direct uh, I try to force a interpolation I think I can do this with the, I can adjust I can adjust it to the current keyframe there's a way to select a keyframe. I forgot how to do that, but um, we select. We can select all this thing and adjust the data, and then I think we can get rid of the handles by hitting Alt something or other. There's there's a way to get rid of the handles so you don't see them, and I forgot what it is. or something there's a way to, to hide the handles and I have to select this one up here I want to select the handle I don't want to select the handle I want to select the main vertex of each of these I'm all selected. I can do a, a what's called a a um oh, wow this is getting to be long. Um then I move this up to that frame. Oh I have to do this. Hey It'll get complex, but you can see where I'm going with this. You, uh, what you want to do 
is you want to select all these guys. I did it wrong at the wrong point. You want to select, you want to go to the, to the main frame, the first frame, and set a keyframe there, and it is selected. Then you take and you duplicate these on this end. Select those main vertices and make sure they're in V. Then you, uh, you duplicate and then you move them over here. Uh, you want the oops. I didn't. I got this. I want that. And then I grab and move these. Oh, I need to get rid of these keyframes. So I, I hit X, delete those keyframes from that, from that, 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 that. Oops. <laughs> now I can't undo it, you know. It, yeah, it's just really complex with an older version of Blender. But what you do is you you make sure you take a create a keyframe duplicate keyframes for the beginning thing and then you move them over and that will step it and then it will it will s cycle on the step it'll step on the cycle and you then you move it up further and then you repeat the animation and then it just keeps it uh so let's oh well we can set a keyframe here we already got it um, no, we have to move it back. We move it back. How much do we move it back? Oh, this is, let me see. Think, yeah. Let's just, we uh, move it back such that uh, this is right there. It won't look perfect, but I'm gonna set the keyframe locate rotate then we select with that with respect to that key hit all and then I think we can select the keyframe the specific key ah oh, there we go and then I can move this up I have to select these all, all these and then grab and move that up and you see that it's starting to and then I put it there and then it will it will repeat the animation um, I move this back here this guy needs to up one of these needs to reset that one is okay this one is not Okay, is this changing at 30? That's changing at 30. This up here is oh, it's it's not it's not fully um it's it doesn't have keyframes for all of the for all the curves. And that's the reason why it's not. But I think we can do. I can do a snap uh, to two frame, and uh, it. And then I can select all the curves. Then do a keyframe. Then make sure everything is normal. I mean, is is. Then it should cycle, and we have to rotate. Um, we that should cycle. This should that should be set to uh, that should be set to this rotation at this frame, and I set everything to rotation. And 
we have to take all the frames, hit V. So there's a keyframe that shouldn't be there. It's right in smack dab in the middle of the data. These things shouldn't be here. Somehow these keyframes got there and I have to delete them. And then that fixed that. Now the cycle seems to be fixed. I go to zero. And I have to adjust the rotation for all the vertices. So I rotate this thing back to here. Then I set a rotational and there that fixes that. Then I have to select everything and hit V. And for some reason it's still doing this. Oh, that needs to. Oh, this needs to. Oh, I need I need to put a keyframe here or Okay, that's okay. It seems to be working, and then um, so it should jump. Um, and then I have to cycle. Oh, I have to do a what's called a extended cycle, an extended extrapolation. This is a cyclic ex extrapolation. I have to do that for this guy right here. And what that does, um, uh, I have to start on frame one. Uh, wow. He, he went, where did he go to? Let me bring him back. Oh, I have to set a keyframe hint for him. Let's do a home, and I have to turn that off, and go back into this mode, I'll do another home, select all, where is there, oh, it's it, home. For some reason it's seen that there's a cycle somewhere, and it's not homing on me select all the vertices and then do a home now there it goes ooh there's there's oh I see the handle chains way the fuck out and we need to fix that select these handles then move them over here now if I do a home it should center on just those okay and uh, then I do I make sure that these are on sub keyframes I hit the keyframe thing I move I select this keyframe uh, I have to select it for everything B select these keyframe Move that up until it's just right, right on the thing. And oh, I have to duplicate that keyframe and bring it back to zero. Uh, yeah. Grab it and move it back to zero. Let's hit in and move this back to one, which is really where it started. Hit in. Hit OK, it moves it back. I select all the vertices and I hit V, and now it should work. And I, it moves up a little bit on the next keyframe. Then I do my cycle extrapolation, and then it should work. And let's go and turn on the polygon again it's right there it's not doing it right um, it needs to move up a little more 
and we need to find out where the we select this we type in 30 it needs to move on 40 it needs to move to so you see it repeats at 30 and on at 20 where is it so it's really supposed to be up here or, or up there it has to be all the way up there so we move it to move the cursor to selected move cursor to selected then we have to go back to this guy select him and make sure that when he's at this point you have to go to a really sub size select the keyframe select that keyframe and set that for where the cursor is move it up to this you have to delete the keyframe move the cursor there yeah, move it back where the cursor is we can actually say move selected to cursor it moves it up then we set another keyframe location rotation and we probably didn't need rotation that probably and then we move this back and now it should work. Um, it's doing a strict interpolation. It's not. It's oh, it it forgot it. Um, it's do, it reset its interpolation. Uh, what we have to do now is we have to select that keyframe, turn it back on keyframe, select that keyframe. Set like these vertices, move them up to that. And you have to adjust this. So we're looking at the we grab and you move that up here. Or, whoops. Oh we got the well, let's um what I should have done is I should have grabbed moved it up a little bit duplicate it no, that's what I should done duplicate it move it up then go to this yeah and move it up so that it's doing that and now it should work This actually should be a keen frame 30. I think it's at 40. No, that's at 30. And yeah, it looks like it's doing it right. Okay, hit that and then let's see the animation. It seems to be moving. It's it's doing something funky. Let me see what it's doing. Ah, that's it's what it is. Is it's the intro frame, and there's an intro frame in here that it is for a split second. It's going back. So we have to move this all the way up until it's just square on it. There is a way to do a step keyframe, but I didn't know. I don't know how to do it. So we return it, and then it should do it. No, it's still doing it for a a really small instance. It's doing it. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, well, you need a step keyframe is what you need. And 
um, you need to be able to do cyclic extrapolation. And so you can see how it can get really detailed if you're trying to do something like that. You're trying to create uh, a cyclic animation. And there, and you may think, well, this is, you know, Blender is just so complex that you can't do anything. You have to understand that any animation software is going to put you through this sort of, um, through this sort of crazy stuff, you know. Um, however, if you had a movable pivot point, you could animate with respect to the pivot point, but you'd still have to mess around with cyclic interpolation and cyclic extrapolation. Um, you would still have to mess around with that crap. And um, the only way to fix this is to have uh, interpolation. I think it's W. Uh, w. Or it's, it's one of these keys that lets you adjust the the um, consistency lets you in that lets you adjust the uh, I, and I forget which key it is but with the new version of Blender you can actually do a search and let's go ahead and load this we'll save this out save it for um, a new version hit F2 type in here and say stuff uh, Kurt um, Ipo Ipo crap we call it Ipo crap and save it out and then bring it into a new version of blender file open Ipo crap where is it it's over here Apple crap hit open and we would then move this over to show all of our curve data select everything then do a home I think that's a how do you do a home Um, view, let's see, and home, home, type in home, um, center view, 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 View all, that's what we want. And uh, there's probably a way to center around a certain view of the data. But then what we would do is uh, for this, uh, we would make sure that we're working with the hit one and then we're working with this curve right here that's uh, looks like this curve and see it lets us in the newer version of blender it lets us see all and hide these so that we only see this empties curve data and then we select everything oh this one this empty is what we want to look at so we hide that one and we look at this empty and we select that and then we do the key interpolation interpolation mode constant so it's hit T T constant T we 
have to get rid of that key that's down there. It's not quite centered on the We have to select that key right there, and uh, select uh, everything. Hit key, interpolation mode, constant interpolation. There, it fixed the, fixed that, and then we have to delete these keys that are right here. Right there, we deselect that. Oh, we have to select. There we go. Then we select that, and then we select these, and then we delete that keyframe, and then it will create a constant jump, and that should. Yeah, it got rid of that extra keyframe. Then we select, we have to select all layers. And on the lock, on the lock layer, we want to see these. And then we can actually take off the lock and uh, look at this layer and watch the it's still jumping. Darn it. Oh, you know what it is? It's um it's that it's so oh, it's it's jumping over here. Something is still interpolating. Oh. Let's set the keyframe interpolation mode constant. like it's interpolating. <sighs> and you can spend for ever ever editing data like that. Um, well, what I probably should do get that keyframe get all the well, get all the frames and select this data or actually that vertex there and duplicate it and move it to frame 30 hit in o and this is the we move it to frame 30 and hopefully it won't jump from that then yeah now it now it works okay and now we need to go to the render buttons and increase our frames so that it just moves off the screen and then, yeah, well, we need to set this up for interpolation, for extrapolation. And I don't, I didn't do that. Let's select all, turn off this, select all, hit key frame, interpolation mode, constant. Um, we need cyclic. Uh, oh. 
that's that's interpolation mode then there is uh, the there is the extrapolation mode there's interpolation mode and it's uh, oh there's an um, There's a cyclic and and the there's this somewhere there's a cyclic there it is extrapolation mode um, make cyclic make cy extrapolation make cy uh, cyclic constant. Okay, and oh darn it, key key. Somewhere in here is extrapolation. Is it under channels? There is extrapolation mode. There's where it's at. It's under channels, extrapolation mode. Uh, make cyclic. Yeah, it's not doing it. Linear extrapolation, constant extrapolation, linear extrapolation. Why is it not doing it? Okay. Key, channel, extrapolation mode, make cyclic. There we go. Is it doing it? It's not. Okay, they screwed up something in the in the newer version of Blender. It's not no longer doing extrapolation for some reason. Now that's pretty common for Blender for them to lose stuff like that because nobody uses it anymore. It's because they're they're. And this is where I would go and I'd contact Tana and I'd say, you guys screwed up interpolate the extrapolation stuff. And they would probably tell me, well, nobody ever, nobody uses it anymore. Um, so there, it's supposed to you're supposed to be able to do a cycle. Maybe it, it's doing it, but it's not showing it on the curve. So let's do a channel extrapolation mode, make cyclic, um, select, and do channel extrapolation. Come on. Oh, it's a new channel. Extrapolation mode, make cyclic, and then let's go ahead and see if it works. Well, it's not. <sighs> That's stupid. Maybe it's because I don't have this turn on. Then I can do it in there. Channels. Channel extra. 
extrapolation. It's not doing it. Okay, they screwed it up. They really screwed it up. There's stuff that just gets forgotten, you know? And that's pretty much... That is that is pretty typical of Blender. And it's pretty typical. It's because Ton is not keeping aware of stuff. And I'm even knowing this of uh, 2.8. Now, the old versions of Blender, this stuff is in there. Um, and that's where you would probably do things, as you would probably do your animation on an older version of Blender, where the where stuff was retained. But uh, this version of Blender, it's not, because people probably just don't animate that way anymore. And that stuff just gets forgotten, and so that would be that would be something to tell them to go and fix when stuff gets forgotten. Yeah, I hate to say it, guys. <laughs> this is, I just really ruined this tutorial, but it's not my fault. It's the stupid program's fault. So I, this is the end of the tutorial. We'll just call this failed, uh, a failed tutorial.